This is character asked it. You already know character did it. I'm here with Bronco. Bronco, bro, tell us about yourself. What's going on, y'all? What's, what's happening? It's fucking Thursday, tomorrow, Friday, but shit, um, shit, I'm just shit, making music and shit like that, you know, catching a vibe in the studio and shit. Really, All right. nothing too deep about it. How old um, are you? I'm 27. 27? How long you been making yeah. music? I like it's probably been like two and a half years. It just hit two and a half years. Okay, what made yeah, you start yeah. at twenty four years old? Uh, shit, really? Cause during the pandemic, I was serving some of the goddamn weed in the studio. I just like fuck it. I might as well goddamn make music. <laughs> shit. That's awesome. That's so, fucking yeah, awesome. Um. um I ended up going to the studio, like keep like booking a studio session by myself. And that was Dirk's engineer, Lil Dirk's engineer now. Um, he's one of my partners in uh, Atlanta because I'm from Atlanta. So um, he ended up putting me on and shit. Yeah, he ended up putting me on. And goddamn, after that, uh, I just got into music. So it's really because of him. Like he the one that was like, oh, bro, you're actually pretty good for this to be your first time in the studio. So I just stuck with it. Hell yeah, bro. Are you connected to Wi-Fi right now? Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, your video is real choppy, but it's okay. It's still choppy. Okay, it just fixed itself right after we just said that. So it hurt us, and it was like, oh, my bad, my bad, I got it. That's the aliens. <laughs> Facts, though. Fucking <laughs> <Okay, aliens. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Man, you want to get into that? Nah, no, no, no. No, hell no. I'm going to get. I'm gonna dive into a random <laughs> Bro, Me too, it. man. This will be a four-hour interview. <laughs> we don't got time for that. <laughs> Nah, for real. But All right, yeah, so um, so tell me about some of the accomplishments and and this journey that you've been on. Um, I think more so I'm really surprised because like you feel me, I'm really like a I like I, I'm really like a tech nigga. So like me doing like music is really like just getting good responses and like fucking getting booked for shows in New York because I just moved up to New York probably like two years ago. You know what I mean? So like it's been a pleasure getting booked and doing like good ass shows and in New York. I bet, bro. Yeah. Right. So, uh, um, where yeah. where are you originally from? I was originally born in Cheyenne. Okay. I was born in Cheyenne, then I moved to Atlanta and I've been That's late, Arizona, late. correct? Or New Mexico. Nah, right? Cheyenne is Wyoming. That's like Oh, oh yeah, okay. My bad. I Colorado, like all the I don't know there. my geography, bro. I I've been in high school <laughs> in a long time, you know. Like <laughs> I feel you, but yeah, I'm from Cheyenne though. I'm always gonna say that. And um I moved to Atlanta and I've been there. I was there for like twenty four years. You That's a me? big so, change like, though. Yeah, it is. What was Definitely that like was. for you? Um from like Cheyenne to Atlanta, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's definitely a faster pace. It's not as fast as New York, but it's definitely a faster pace. I must say that. Um, uh, just getting accustomed to like certain traditions and like how shit go and shit like that, and knowing like certain shit. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, like, it was smooth though. Like, I like I love Atlanta. You feel me? Like, my whole family's still down there. What was the transition from Atlanta to New York like? <laughs> I could fucking sink or swim. <laughs> that ass, like, it was fucking sink or, sink or swim the whole time. Like, trying to make music and trying to get a job at the same time to support music and support you living type shit. What do you do for uh, a living? Uh, I work at tech. I work at a financial firm. How'd that happen? You went to school? Shit, hell no. Nah. I, mean, I got a lot of so many times, nigga. That shit, hell no. Nah. <laughs> so how'd that happen, bro? You got a good job in yeah, New York. How did that I, happen? I, 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 Man, it's just me, like, I, I, like, I had a lot of separate individual projects that I did in Atlanta. I got a lot of notoriety, you know what I mean? Just, like, ateliers and, like, project management, just, like, handling a lot of, like, big commerce stores in New York that I was putting together for them, like, just off the whim of doing it from the house. Um, So I ended up putting that on my resume, and they picked it up. Uh, it took me, like, seven months to get the job, because it took me, like, five months to do my background check, so... Wow. I mean, like, I had an engineering internship that I got in by the grace of God. So this really just fell on my lap, like, fell on my lap type shit. You know what I'm saying? And um, I used to work, I was working at VH1 while they was doing the um, background check process. So that kind of kept me afloat, you feel me, before I just totally quit and just went. I like how you just casually say I was working at VH1 while this process was happening. <laughs> yeah, I was working for, I was working at Love and Hip Hop in New York. How'd you I land was, that? Them and Black Ink. How'd you I land think. that? Uh, I had a friend that did uh, 
she she was a productive assistant. And she moved up and then she got in contact with me. Like, I need somebody to take my spot. So, shit. I didn't know. So, I didn't touch spot. It's all about who you know. Who you know. Hey, in New York, <laughs> that's what it's about. Who, who you know. Who all you over know. the world, bro. Any industry you're in, man, it's all about who you know. Oh, uh, exactly. Tell me about some of the obstacles that you faced. Um, in New York, it's probably just like, it's, you know, the balance, like, rent, balance, like, money. It's really, in New York, it's really a money thing. Like, that's my biggest, well, it was my, big, my, my biggest obstacle, really, was just being in New York, like, taking care of music, paying for studio sessions. Because I have a home studio at the crib, but it's more so of just, like, paying for videos and shit like that. It, like, stretches you out. You know what I mean? So I didn't want to be stressed out. So that was my biggest obstacle, just having money to create my vision and how I wanted to. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of artists that struggle with that, like, Absolutely. having the funds to like live a life outside the studio and being committed to the studio so honestly when i'm talking to artists nine times out of ten when i ask that question their answer what are the obstacles i faced in my music journey life it's life like life, life. like people getting locked up and niggas dying and shit you gotta like emotionally just take a toll on you type shit like it's just yeah life really life bro like life is hard i'm gonna keep it a buck <laughs> Hey, I think someone just joined and I appreciate you being here, but would you mind muting your mic? They think, I think they did. Okay. Uh, Do you want to, do you want to tell me more about any of those people that you've known who've gotten locked up or, or, or died? You know, do you want to dive into the things that affect you? I mean, just because, like, like I done been in and out of jail. I done been in prison type shit. And you got, like, partners that you grew up with going in there and niggas still. Now I talk to my partner in prison right now probably, like, if not every two days type shit. He always call me. Then I got to pay for his shit. And then it's just, like, people back in my city getting killed left and right. Like, I just had one of my homegirls get murdered by her boyfriend, like, last week type shit. And um, it's just, like, you trying to be there for everybody type shit. Like, that's me, like. If I'm in a position or predicament to be there, I'm gonna try my hardest. You feel me? And like sometimes it takes its toll on me. You feel me? So sometimes I just be stressed out. Like, but I still wake up with good attitude and try to like, like think about it for like two hours and like you know what I mean. If I need to be by myself for two hours or if I need to just like chill or like think about it, take a walk, I will. But I just make sure I give it like at least a little time to think about the bad shit what's going on, and then I'll just like transition back over. You feel me? So that's that's kind of how I balance that shit. But shit, like I literally just got on felony probation probably like last July. I was on that shit since I was like seventeen. How long were you like, in prison? I was in prison for like seven. I did. Let me let me just break the whole thing down. I did probably two and two years all together in county, like two and a half years, and I did seven months in prison. So I probably did a whole three years, three and a half years. <laughs> you want to talk about why? I mean, I had caught an assault charge in like 2015, a bad assault charge, like bad. What happened? But they, um, I was at, I was leaving, me and my homies had pulled up to like the pool and shit, just kicking shit, normal shit. And um, it was like some off duty fucking policemen and firefighters that was there type shit, but they got to talking crazy like to us type shit. I'm not even gonna get into the details cause you feel me, everything tapped. Uh, they got to talk it crazy, and um, I don't really got no patience with the mouth shit. I really don't. Oh shit, I ain't. I don't really need to say shit. I hear it. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to say nothing because I can hear what's being said. So I just pop that shit off and just dug like just you know what I'm saying? Like went crazy. I'm talking about and talking about clearing the whole shit up. Then um, I hopped in my car, tried to speed off, type shit, go around the neighborhood, oh, like costing oh, like ramming my no. shit. Hitting me to a hitting me to a mailbox, all type of shit. It was crazy though. But then, yeah, I got locked up. Damn, got locked up for some, some some weed shit, and then like some other boy shit, and they just kept sending me back like every time. But I ain't been I I've been out since like 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 two years, two years. Like, all yeah. right, so that is a hell of a thing to go through. And to be in the position you're in where you're trying to put people on and you're and you're you got people putting you on legitimate hustles. What are the legitimate. lessons that you learned from from that experience? Really, I feel like it just built me like differently, like for like any type of 
shit that pop off. Like any type of problems that hit my plate, I don't even stress about them because like I don't been the way worse predicament. If anything, I'm blessed to have problems that I got now. Like I look at the problems I got now, it's like good I'm problems to have. To have. They're good problems. Yeah, I got to good have. problems. I got homie problems. I got like helping my homies out problems. Like I don't got like problems in jail type shit. That's a blessing to me. So. I think I'm just built like like just it has built me for a lot of shit to for me to like even like go through the music shit with like making adjustments and like not being so down on myself if something don't go how I want to type shit like this shit like I just be going through the motions but just doing it intentionally you feel me not to mention the mistakes you made before you were in prison but are there significant mistakes or the mistakes you want to talk about that you made since you got out uh it took me a long time to adjust to like I think mentally and then like building my character up who I wanted to be. Like there's points in your life where you are who you gotta be at a time, you feel me? And then you get to a place where you're not dealing with it. So you can kind of build your character around like who you wanna be, and who you wanna be viewed as and who you what energy you wanna get off. And um I think that was my biggest my biggest obstacle, just like breaking certain habits and like like being better at communicating like my emotions with without it getting out of hand and shit like it was just like it was like characteristic shit it's like that was the shit i had to like get correct like characteristic shit so i feel you i totally feel yeah, you bro. that's a lot of the reason why i go by character bro because i'm trying to go <laughs> by the yeah, right like... character man i'm trying <laughs> to be the right goddamn character you know what i mean hell yeah so it's really that so tell me about your following right now do you have any kind of following and how have you built the even if it's not how have you built what you um, have? Really, my following is like people that I generally interact with. Like that's you know important. What I mean? they, yeah, and I wanted to do it like that. I don't want just anybody on my shit because especially they don't add no value or they're not interacting. It's like pointless. It's like a dead body. So um, really, my following is just like people that like like my music, push me, like outside of studio shit because I'm always on some outside of studio shit because I love life hands down <laughs> and, um, yeah for That's real beautiful so, okay yeah yeah so just people that like you know they get it they get like the circumference of like being an artist and being a human too at the same time you know what i mean like people to people person like i got people tapped in like every region like every country like i probably got like five producers in each country like you know like no cap um there's a couple producers in here now that that produce some of my music so oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You said you've been in New York for a short period of time, and you're you're performing. Yeah, I that's a flex I in itself, bro. <laughs> that's a flex in itself. How are yeah. you performing already in New York? You only only been doing music for two and a half years. You haven't been in New York the whole time. How are you already performing? It's just like expressing what I want, trying my hardest to get what I want without stepping over any boundaries, and just. Being confident in what I'm able to do, like you're being real modest confident. right now. You're being real modest. Like, tell me how you actually ended up performing. I mean, I just, I mean, it's like it's up to my like manager, like my friends, no people, and then people I go to studio. Tell me about no your people. manager though. Tell me about your manager because I've talked to your manager. He's mad professional. He's doing his thing. He's he's representing you in a real great way. So tell me about your manager and the things he's done for you, and tell me about who he is. Um, me and Joe, we met at a pop up. Um, a ghetto friends pop up shout out to ghetto friends um met at a ghetto friends pop up and he was telling me like he's a producer and stuff like that but he went to the studio that same day <laughs> together and we ended up uh, making a song that we actually about to drop probably like in the next two months or so but we kind of like built a friendship for like a year you know what i mean like i'm talking about like a friendship for a year where we like going to the studio working on shit just like talking but he, he wasn't my manager until like Probably like two months ago, like three months ago, you know what I mean? So I feel like he asked me to do it. He was like, hey, like, don't, do you mind me being your manager? Like, he asked me because I, I literally would do this shit by myself on my back, for real, for real. Um, I do trust him and I trust his intentions and he's never done it. So it's really a learning process, even like when like me trying to help him out how to send proper emails and stuff like that. Like, I still do that because like. I want him to do it but if i know how to do something the right way because of like my field i'm in then i'm gonna give him some tips not saying like he's not good but like i'm always gonna give him some tips to do better and i'm always gonna tell him what he can do better you feel me if he's lacking on any shit, and that's any productive relationship that's any productive yeah, relationship yeah, we have a good like we don't built a friendship where i can do that like i can tell him like yo like 
we got to tighten this shit up and try to do this shit. And it's not coming from a negative place. He understands, like, I'm telling him that because I genuinely want him to be a good, like, good yep. at what he does in all, any, any realms, you know? And I'm kind of possessive over, like, you know what I'm saying? My oh, friends, trust. My I, yeah. Like, I'm very possessive. You gotta my, be. My you gotta <laughs> be, bro. There's snakes all over the place, man. Hella snakes in the grass. It's probably one Facts, right now. Bro. You, you gotta know, keep but... that shit mode. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real, but no, nah, you did, guy. you did, you uh, he, you landed a solid relationship with that guy. I'll tell you, as a third yeah. party who has interacted with him as a representative of you, I already knew how serious you were by how professional he presented himself. Y'all are right. doing your thing, and and it it makes a difference. Respect to it for real. Appreciate that. Yeah, he's a good dude, man, and um. He did a lot. He's a producer too. He did like a, the song I just dropped, Kill Bill. Like he produced that one. That's just amazing. Like, that's he did that one. damn it, man. I wish I brought it up before you brought it up, but that's the one oh, I wanted to bring up, man. I yeah. I really like that song. I and I don't that. say yeah. that lightly. That song is some real shit. That song, you can tell how it meant something to you. Right. Because I can relate to it and it means something to me off of a couple listens. You know what I mean? There was a lot yeah. of passion put in that song. And your flow is fucking killer, bro. Appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that for real because I don't write shit. I just go in the booth cause, and catch up. I don't write shit. I, just, I really make the song when I'm at the mic. Because it's like I can't premeditate how I'm going to feel because so much shit be popping off where it's like, like if I want to go, like I can't premeditate shit at this point in my life. I can't. So I just go off based on feeling. Like if I get in an argument with a, a woman or some shit, a shorty or some shit, like and I'm in a studio, my nigga, guess best believe we finna you know, lay it down. <laughs> You're gonna lay it down. I'm finna, I'm finna lay that shit down. Or if like you know if it was a turn ass weekend or some shit, and I'm with the gang and we just outside on smoking and doing whatever drugs we do type shit. Then we on that type of time, but. Like, I just try to do things in the spur of the moment because, like, it's the rawest emotions or thoughts. It's the closest thing I have my thoughts. Like, the time distance between, like, my thoughts and when it happened is so close that I can really get specific with what I'm talking about. For sure. For sure. No, yeah. I feel that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I want to try to get your video a little bit better. It's real choppy right now. And I'm kind right of wondering, yeah, it's been choppy for a minute. I'm kind of wondering <laughs> if it's because of everybody that's on this call right now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. My Wi-Fi is booming, though. It's that's good, what I'm guys. saying. So, like, <laughs> I, I would imagine if you're on Wi-Fi, it's not that. How many I mean, people I can are probably, on this call Let me see. Right I can now? hop off my shit and get on my hotspot because I'm on my laptop, too. I can hop off my shit, for real. Okay. All right. Did it get better? Help. Did it get any better? Yes, it looks like it is better. It looks like it is way right. better. Oh, yeah, that's right. way better, bro. Bet. Cool. All right. All right. That's what it was. Let's keep going. Uh, <clears throat> what does success in life look like to you, and what does success in music look like to you? Oh, uh, shit. My six life really is like... Yeah. Success in life is really just making sure... Like, really, I'm just happy, honestly. Like, if... It's just that, like, because I feel like I done had so many years of not being happy to do. That's my ultimate goal type shit. And um, whether it's doing music or whether it's, like, running a studio or running a label or A&R, like, that's my goal. And just make sure, like, my daughter's straight and make sure, like, my family good, my friends good, like, they in a good place. It's really just, like, like rubbing off on everybody if I can. That's my, that's really my goal. Like, I see this as, like, a big-ass team thing, like a mm. big-ass family. For real, for real. I don't really see it just me. I never have. And that's why I kind of like talk to my circle the way I talk to them. Because like, I'm going to talk to them how I talk to myself in the mirror. You know what I mean? Because I want us to all get there. You know what I mean? Like, if I got to pull you, my nigga, then I'm, I'm going to pull you. But um, that's why. That's my goal, for real. That's my that's my life goal. Just to get everybody in the predicament that um, everybody's enjoying shit. And I'm doing enjoying shit. Shit doesn't feel too heavy. Um, that's my goal, for real. So talk to me about your circle. Um, I got my shit is very my shit is Cheerio small, very Cheerio small. Cheerio small, that's my new favorite my term. Is, my shit is Cheerio small, and um, it's really just um, uh, it's like 
it's just like like my manager's close friend one of them swan he's in here too melly's in here like a couple people in here in my circle uh tally she's in here she stays all the way in um she stays in detroit but it's really just like a group of music people that take themselves seriously and take me serious and they don't be doing too many risky things outside i don't like risky circles like i wouldn't fuck with somebody if they doing shit that would put me at risk that i don't gotta be at risk about you feel me so my circle is very like goal oriented they all got their own shit going on what they doing but collectively like it's the same type of same type of vision you know what i'm saying it's all about who you surround yourself with for real it makes a huge difference 100 percent. so that's that what about success in music <laughs> Um, success in music, I do. I want to fuck that shit. I want to. I want a Grammy. I mean, I want to go fucking do it. I know. Um, I, I think I can though. Like speak it into like, existence, bro. Yeah, I can. I know I can. I, I don't heard this shit. I don't heard nigga shit in me. I don't heard nigga shit in New York. I don't do no drill beats. Not to knock on they wood, but like, bro, that's a box that everybody living in. Like y'all can. It's not that much room in that box for y'all. Y'all to be sleeping in the same bed. Like, <laughs> a lot. Of, Dead ass, I can't stand that shit. But it's just like I feel like I'm so versatile to the point where it's like something gonna hit. You feel me? Like I'm gonna keep doing it. Something gonna click. All you need is that one thing to click, and then they'll catch on. So I feel like I definitely can. Goddamn, yeah, go platinum. I think I can for real. <laughs> nah, bro, don't say think. Anybody don't like, say think. Take that word out your vocabulary. Uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, you I'm know you can. Like, I know. I'm knowing that shit. Like it don't matter. Like I tell my partners all the time. Like, like. Free him, free Thug, but if Thug got a studio with me, definitely I'm gonna try to body him for sure. And that's just what it is, cause like I feel like I'm that good of a of an artist. Like seriously, and I love him to death. Like I love him. I can't wait no to doubt, get out. No like, doubt. I hope he get out. You but do what you gotta do that, to prove yourself. Yeah, like I don't let nobody any. Yeah, like I'm that competitive. Cause I used to do sports. I'm that competitive. Where it's like, yeah, I'm trying to eat on somebody for real. Hell yeah. I'm like, I don't care watching. I'm gonna eat on. I'm gonna eat on somebody for real. For real. Like I don't get no fucks for real. <laughs> I'm dead ass. I'm dead ass. These niggas not. Nice I'm gonna they put nice my food. plate on your back. For real, I put my plate in black and just eating. Like everybody gonna eat. All the, everybody's gonna eat. We're gonna stretch you out. And I'm gonna have all my partners plate lined up on you because y'all not seeing me. Every time somebody wanna come to the studio with me, we get in the studio and I do my verse. They come after me. It's like nothing to do. Cause at that point you're like, what do I do after? You're stealing like, songs. You're just stealing songs. Get out the studio. I'm punching another verse. I'll do the whole song. You can step out. I have it so many times. Like I promise you, everybody can vouch. I have it so many times. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. Yeah. Hell yeah, that's a flex. That's a flex. That's a big flex. <laughs> <laughs> that does. Tell me something yeah, unique that most people don't know. Something, something different. Something random about your life childhood whatever first job whatever oh uh, shit what is something unique i mean i mean really i mean just because i'm from cheyenne i don't know anybody that's from cheyenne you know it's I mean? true i mean what was your experience like in wyoming i mean it's a lot of outside a lot of, that's why my artist name is bronco like i literally because i do pioneer days but you know what i mean like we ride horses we break horses in and, um yeah so it's like yeah it's like i know horses like the back of my hand damn and, um, yeah, I think it's like a thing where it's like I tell people that they're like, what the hell? I'm just like, yeah, like that's why my name's Bronco. Plus, I got a big Bronco tattoo in the middle of my stomach where it's like, yeah, I don't. This is in my blood. Like, this is really in my blood type shit. But um, I played sports when I was a kid, like cross country and shit, basketball, football. I did all that shit till high school. Um, that's pretty much like yeah, like it's really nothing crazy about my shit other than you feel me. All right, that you broke horses, bro. That's fucking crazy. I don't care yeah. what you say. Tell me you got some yeah, pictures got or some shit from that. Um, I mean we got a ranch. It's on Horse Creek Road and literally blew up on Horse Creek Road, which is crazy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, so we got a ranch out there, a big ass field. Mm. I think the funniest thing was when I first was getting started, because I had to get to an age where I could literally um my legs had to be able to like cuff the side of the horse like if they couldn't do that i couldn't get on but i finally got on and um the first time like i think i like busted my whole elbow out as a kid and i literally was just scared of horses for like a year oh but then, like, damn. But then your uncles and cousins get the pressure on your ass to get back on it like don't be a bitch bro get back on it and i was like fuck it but yeah um that was that that's um, crazy that's unique 
That's oh, unique. That was a like, solid it was, answer. It was it was wild as fuck for real, for real. Um, yeah, and then that's pretty much it. I remember uh, I was I didn't I didn't tell you this story, but in New York, um, another obstacle was when I got neck surgery. They had to like like I had got. got Hold on, you neck got up. neck surgery. Don't just yeah, back. Gotta, don't just skip over that. What? I mean, I had got so I had got I had I had an appointment, a dental appointment. And the doctor fucked up my tooth. Like when he pulled it, he left something in it. So my whole right side of my neck and my jaw swelled up where I couldn't open my mouth. They had to literally take me to the ER and cut my neck open. It was bad. Oh and they had to drain like. And I got videos of like me in the studio with a big ass patch on my neck, and I haven't even dropped them. Like, send me rapping, those, like, please. Send me those. <laughs> I'm gonna send it to you, but I got three. I have three. Like I was, I was, I got at the hospital, and three days later, I booked a session because I was able to open my mouth, and I was so depressed that I couldn't make music. Wow. And I was in there rapping, like with the patch on my neck sounding different. Like it was like a Fifty Cent Kanye moment. Swear to God, I kid you not. Through the, through wire, the wire, bro. Hundred <laughs> percent. Give it to die trying, nigga. Literally, and it was like it hurt. You know what I mean? But it was a good we made a video too like, <laughs> bro that's 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 badass though i mean that's crazy yeah it was good though man like that was a bad one though because i couldn't talk for like three months I couldn't eat shit like real food Damn. i like you know, like Caribbean food chicken all that shit i couldn't eat none of that shit so it was just depressing but once i got good i was on in that studio and then I got <laughs> weird and then i got out get out of my way give me the studio that's what i was doing <laughs> <laughs> i swear bro i was out of there that's funny man oh, yeah. is there anything that i didn't know to ask you or anything you got coming up that you want to talk about bro um i got a couple of projects coming up um i got a radar R project that's gonna drop i got a private bronco that's gonna drop i got a cut the chase ep that's gonna drop um and all these tapes are done like i'm probably I can probably drop a tape, not probably. Let me cut that shit out. I can drop a tape a month until for like two years. Like, I kid you not, and it'll be cohesive. Like, I make that much music where I'm always in the studio. So, like, I have a lot of shit coming. I got a Kill Bill video that's gonna drop. I'm gonna shoot that soon. I got a uh, private Bronco listening session where it's like a live listen. We're gonna have a band and like it's gonna be curated. We're gonna do that live. I got that coming up, but um. Yeah, pretty much. I got, you know what I'm saying? We just got a lot of shit coming up. Like, we really do. We really work hard. Like, the thing yeah, about us, we, yeah, we work hard. We do work hard. Yeah, we work hard. And we don't do it for, like, the, the fun of it or the look of it. We really be working hard. Like, we really stress out in, in internally. You know what I mean? Like, so that's what I like. We, we be doing that be. shit. We work hard. Like, you surround yourself with a group of individuals that pushes each other to be the best people that you can be and and the best professionals and artists you can be sounds like 100 percent. we do like yeah and if you don't we gonna get you on that time <laughs> okay you gotta get shook up in the studio your ass gonna straighten out for real bro. hell yeah that's what it's all about for real yeah so that's pretty much like uh, i just like my i like my circle i like where we're heading I like the um growth i have as an artist you know from like my first song that i did until my like now it's like I like the growth like i really do facts man mm -hmm. I, I i appreciate that i feel that and i respect it i everything you and your your group is doing y'all y'all are heading the right direction for real yeah i think we are i think everybody's doing what they're supposed to do like one of my other man's he's in school for music he goes to music school and like he be making my beats too at the same time um joe he does his shit like photography and he does my beats which is amazing um melly he shoots videos Everybody do their thing, like. Hell yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what you need. That's what you need. Yeah, yeah, Unless yeah, there's yeah. anything else you wanted to talk about, man. That's all I got. Shit, not much. It's just shit. Music, hella music on the way. A lot of uh, creative shit on the way. Um, shows on the way. We're about to host our own show at Skate Shop. Um, that's going to be fucking wild. Um, but yeah, it's just that, like, we just get in there how we, we get it and just no stress behind it. Like, we just doing it exactly how we want to do it. Like, and we're going to get it. I, I know it's going to click, though, because we're literally doing it the way we want to do it. Like, not, like, falling into no bullshit, no clout shit, none of that shit. Like, it's people to people, like, personalities, genuine personalities, and um, really are staying true to what we stand on, for real. Like, we don't be folding for shit. Hell we don't yeah. care who you is. I really don't give a damn. <laughs> oh. 
Respect yeah. to that, bro. Respect to that. Yeah. This has been another awesome episode of Character Acid with Bronco. Bronco's about to take over the world with him and his team, man. Y'all okay. watch out for Bronco. So, horses coming, all that shit. Out of stable, all that shit. Tune in to Bronco. <laughs> follow him up. Tune in with Character Acid. We'll see y'all next time. Peace out. Out of there.